so much. You well, can do that too, right? I think. Yeah, I can if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Right. That's right. There she goes. See? See, she can do it. She's... I want you to show the I've, guys. I've, show, I want you to show everybody what you were doing just a few seconds ago I, before I've, we came on the yeah, air. Yeah, you know, they should have taped that because uh, <laughs> I can't do it again. Um, I've done that since 1977. Yeah. Super 60s. You can still do it, too. I don't know how much longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Arthritis, arthritis sits Arth in. Yes, arthritis. I'll be going like this. I go, okay, I got to put and this. And you're going to be saying, put, put the this. thumb out, but I can't. Boy, does that hurt. Okay. Uh, we ha we ha the reason we're going to have fun this morning. Yeah, That's right. The, the we're reason we're having so much fun, honey, mm -hmm. let's walk right over here and meet our guests. because Let's, because they're seated there yes. waiting for us. This is Jonas. <laughs> you want to introduce her? This is Anne. His wife. Yes. Actually, we, we, we're not uh, exercising the distancing. Do you notice what I did Yeah, there? what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing. I know it. Sit he down. Could, <laughs> he could literally sue me. Yes, I know. Uh, I know. If anything happens. Uh, Good to have you guys back. Yeah, she's got her mask on. Actually, it's <laughs> Jonas and Ann Byler. <laughs> yes. And that, the lady right there, uh, Dave's got this all set for me. See that young lady right there sitting? Can you get a close-up of her? Uh, do the graphic, Dave, that will explain exactly who she is. Okay. Look at your screen. Watch what <laughs> happens. There it is. <laughs> On the screen, she is the founder of that. Oh, everybody knows that place. Everybody and, loves it. And, and, you know, a lot of times you'll have guests on, and they will, you know, have invented something or something like this or be the founder, <laughs> and it's like, you, you don't despise it, but you, you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's good, you know. But I'm telling you, your product is <laughs> the best. I mean, I can't walk in a mall when so you good. smell that. So good. You know, that's there's the something plan. about the body that goes, excuse me, honey, I'm going over here. Yeah. Okay, I mean, did, did you or Jonas name that Auntie Auntie Anne's A friend pretzels. of ours named it Auntie Anne's because we were in business about six weeks and we didn't have a name for our company, so yeah. we were just doing a market stand. And she said, you need to call it Auntie Anne's Soft Pretzels because everybody calls you Auntie Anne. Anyway, we but have... we found out the last time you were here, uh -huh. you were ready to give up. Oh, yeah, that's and right. this guy right here... <laughs> He's the man. He said, I got an idea. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and that, that was such a, that was a revelation. I know. It was, it was a gift from heaven. Yes. Yeah, uh, and so it's because of Jonas that, that Auntie Anne's came to be. Because you had tried everything mm -hmm. and went over, and, and it was, and, and the lines weren't coming. We weren't, we were barely selling and, pretzels. And you, you had, you had paid, what, $6,000 for this mall place? Yeah, that's place. right, the market stand. Yes, and mm -hmm. it, it wasn't working. Yeah, that's right. And well, you know their story. Wow. I, well, I know. Uh, you, you must oh, have by the way, you, by the way you, can, you can have that story in this book right here. If you go mm -hmm. to their mm -hmm. website, that's you can right. get that book. Yeah. And that's one. And then she's a prolific writer now. And then it, this is your other book, right? That's right. I just, uh, that was just, we put The Secret Lies Within in October of last year. Wow. I mean, yeah. but we're, we're interviewing Jonas today. I lo don't you love that name? I do. I, I, I love the Mennonites. I married one. <laughs> this is a Yoda. Now, one of you is a Mennonite, one is Amish, right? He was Old Order Amish, and I was Amish. Okay, Mennonite. all right. So he's Amish, not Mennonite. And you you lived gotta, in you Pennsylvania? Keep it oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I mean, that, that is just gorgeous country. Lancaster County, the Amish the best. of the world. Yes, yes. <laughs> I and, know. And, and the, so the, what's his book? This, this book right here, I'm, I'm holding it up. There it is on screen. Thanks, guys. Uh, it is the most amazing story. I was, I was uh, uh, talking to some of the people. I mean, it's funny, when we're having guests, or when I try to give them a little excerpt of what it is, and, and I said, the only thing I can say about this book, the word forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that ought to be the title, although mm -hmm. you wouldn't grab it mm -hmm. because you'd go, what is that all about? Yeah. But this is the most amazing story. Now, I've read the story. I've got all kinds of clips here, but I would sure appreciate... Did you write this? I mean, or did the other guy on the back here help? We worked together very worked closely. Together. I have, uh, let me tell you, I have probably interviewed 3,000 plus, plus people in these 40 years, okay? I mean, from all walks of life, you name it. And I, and so, and I read the books, and I... And I I'm a connoisseur of who can write, hmm. <laughs> and, and some, I mean, self-published books 
I read them and then I go, oh my goodness, this is this is yeah. this is not good. <laughs> who who I mean, if you two guys did this together, you guys Wait, are uh, really. Yeah. I Sean's mean, you are. Re I'm not just good. You are really good. Wow. Right. Sean Smucker is a great writer. Say that name? Sean Smucker. His name is Sean Smucker. Is he related to the Smuckers? He's, he's my uh, nephew. She's ah. part of it. You know, the preserves, the Smucker preserves? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, well, somewhere way back there. Yeah. Yeah. Is that that's where my too. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. We weren't in that line, but that's good. Well, yeah. so we're back, yeah. back yeah. a little ways. We've well, way yeah, back. But, yeah, but you guys have made it so well that people say they're in your line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but, but I want you to tell this story because uh, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of push push you. I've got, I've got all kinds of notes. Look at my notes here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, okay, well, I mean, and well, I even got sec page two. But, I brought some notes, too, but I didn't know how far we'd get into okay. that. Okay. But, but if you know the book, do you know the book? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> I probably forgot most of okay. it by now. But okay. <laughs> well, let's hear the story. So start at the beginning. Yeah. And kind of, and I and I'll I'm gonna because we're only got a half hour. Yeah. So I'm gonna move you into areas or whatever. But begin how this unbelievable story started. Well, the unfortunate day, uh, October second, two thousand six. A deranged man went into an Amish schoolroom and shot ten girls. Can I set it up a little before that? Yeah. This six foot two guy, three hundred pounds, kind of a soft looking I'm just going by the book, a yeah. very kind looking guy. This is what he did that morning. I mean think about it. He's living in Lancaster County. Right. If you've never been that part of the world, it's like the birds chee 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 chee. It's like it's like a different part of the world. I mean because the Amish I mean, you don't have all these fumes going on. I mean, they're buggies. I mean, it's just beautiful, okay? And then he's got a family. He got two kids mm -hmm. and a wife. He starts his day by his wife leaving after feeding breakfast and everything, and she's going to a Bible study. He walks with his kids out to the bus. They go onto the bus, <laughs> and he stands there. And he asks them to come off the uh, bus again. Right. And they come off the bus, and he looks at them and hugs them and tells them how much daddy loves them. Mm -hmm. Okay, they then, go back then on we'll the bus. Back. They go back on the Now, this, this is the life this guy <clears throat> had. He drove a semi truck milk truck that would pick up milk from the Amish community and, and one of those big, you know, with a big chrome <laughs> big tank trailer. And that was his life. Okay, continue. So, then uh, what, he did, what did he do? He, he went into the one-room schoolhouse and uh, shot ten girls. Five of them lived, five of them died. Can I go, can I back up just yeah, a little bit? sure. <laughs> Seriously, you know when I have guests on that write these things, they always go right past all the details. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and that's what just gets me because I'm detail crazy. This guy, days before, had uh, accumulated uh, ply boards and all the stuff, the equipment that he needed. He even had wrist ties for the for the because he knew he was going to tie up the girls and the and the students. So he had zip ties and he had the boards in order to block out all of the windows and he nailed nailed those up and he had the zip ties to to close all the doors and you couldn't pull the door open so that you couldn't even get in. And then this was a part of the book that just blew my mind. He took lubricant. He was going to have sex with the girls. Mm -hmm. This six foot two wife goes off to Bible study. He went to church from time to time with his wife. And so these innocent little girls laying on the floor, tied with their zip ties, and they're saying, you're not going to hurt us. No. No, I'm not. So he did that to keep them Did you calm. know him at all before no. this? No. Okay. Move did you know the girls? Uh, not personally, no. Okay. I mean, move, move from where he's in the building now, and he's going through this ritual of where, and, and somebody slipped out and called the police, and now the police are surrounding the school, yeah, yeah. and he knows this. Right, and he, uh, actually one of the state police uh, had phone contact with him yes. uh, during that time. On his cell. And then when he started, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when he started uh, shooting, this policeman dove through the window. 
he dove through a closed window uh, mm. through the glass and went in there and by that time the guy had already shot these he shot him, and, and he shot, shot himself. himself yeah and uh, and and so from that point I mean this quiet village that the most mm. tragedy they ever have is somebody smashing their finger from a hammer right. hammer uh, right you know building a building uh, and and and, the, and you've got helicopters coming in from all directions, ambulances coming mm -hmm. down every road, and these girls, all of them were shot, right? Yeah, ten, ten of them. Ten of them were shot. Uh, they didn't all die right away, of course, but the, uh, the five. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, they scurried them off to hospitals. Yeah. Five, you say in the book three. that the hardest thing was a guy had to determine who they worked on first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, because uh, it was just a mess. It was just a mess, uh, unbelievable mess. You know, the the shooter sent all the boys out, and they were hiding actually in in a restroom out outside restroom, and uh, they felt so helpless because yeah. they couldn't help their sisters or yeah. their yeah. friends, yeah. Uh, classmates, and uh, yeah, you know, it just deteriorated from there of course. Do you know like anything this. about this guy? Have you what caused him to go off the uh, deep end? You know he had lost a child, a uh, stillborn child about uh, seven years prior to that yeah. and they think he never recovered because he got very quiet. He blamed God. Well he blamed God and, for that. And, 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 he, and, <clears throat> and, and had this grudge. Uh, you know it was just a very difficult situation but nobody knew because he kept it all within. Mm -hmm. His wife didn't even realize how hard he grieved over the, the death of his own daughter. She found a note that he had yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, knew, he knew he'd that. never come back. That's why, yeah. that's why he took yeah. the kids off the bus and mm -hmm. hugged them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. Uh, but you know, the, as, a, as the day went on, when I got there, you know, it was just a... Why did they call you? Well, uh, our counseling center was called to the scene. We had some of our counselors there almost immediately. I was not able to be there immediately, but by the time I drove up, you know, there's all these helicopters in the air. Uh, they weren't. Uh, did you have any idea what no, was going? No. no. Well, yeah, I did. I was listening to the radio okay. on all the right. way over, so okay. I knew how okay. drastic it was. So, you know, the paramedic helicopters were gone, but. The news helicopters by now, you know, so there was, there was uh, four or six of those in the air, and it was just an eerie feeling, uh, mm -hmm. and and so sad. And uh, as as the as the day went on, uh, you know, the Amish are so quick yeah. to move into this era of forgiveness because it's it's, part, a, I, it's part of their culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was explaining it to Derek, our sound guy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard and, and he, he just yeah. his eyes are getting that big, mm -hmm. I, I, and, he, and and they forg they forgave. I was raised like that. I watched my parents do similar things, so I I knew that would be their response. But to actually see it again, uh, it, it was just it was just amazing. You know the this message of forgiveness started to come out by the middle of the afternoon. This happened like ten in the morning, I guess something like that. So by the middle of the afternoon. The news media was already picking up on this message of forgiveness, and I'm thinking, how did they get this so quick? Uh, and then by late afternoon, there was an Amish man went to Charles Roberts' mother's home, to his parents' home, knowing that his. Uh, his now you're talking about the the shooter. The shooter's <laughs> mother, the shooter's parents, and the shooter's widow was at this home as well by by now because they moved from. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, her home over to her parents. And, and the so, Amish families and, went to that location? Yes. Uh, well, an Amish man okay. that was representing the Amish community, uh, this is what they do, this is the unusual part about it, went to that home and said to them, we're not holding this against you uh, no, in no. any way, shape, or form. We want to be your friends. You lost a son, too. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, wow. we're in this together. My mm -hmm. goodness. We're not going to hold anything against you. We want to be your friends. And, and that's when that friendship started. I heard Charles Roberts' mother uh, 
uh, give a presentation a couple of times after that, and she's the real deal, believe me. And she always told the story that that Amish man that came dressed in a black suit was her black angel. My wow. uh, She said, I can't, I can't tell you what that did for me. The, the girls' bodies were all over different hospitals. Mm. Yes. You point mm. that Very out. Very difficult day for and, them. And, and some that thought their child was alive mm -hmm. arrive at a hospital and realize that's not their yeah. child. Well, there was one family that lost two girls. Yes. They went to Hershey Medical Center and had to uh, make the decision to take her off life support. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Hershey, Pennsylvania. And then they went to, uh, I think it was uh, Christiana, uh, yeah. Delaware, to another hospital and did the same thing again yeah. to, to another one of their children, just had to make so that. So they realized they identified them incorrectly, right? Well, and they knew by then where their girls were, but that was, a, that, uh, I was at the house actually where that process was taking place. Uh, earlier in the day because the girls are all dressed the same or very it's similar. That's true. That's right. So they were on the phone with these different hospitals trying to figure out which girls are where. Yeah. And and the nurses and doctors were describing them the best they could, you know, whether in this color dress. And for the most part, they all wear similar colors. Mm -hmm. So they were down to, you know, uh, our daughter has a little scar or maybe a birthmark or a wart or something mm -hmm. to identify them that way and, and to mm -hmm. get to the... You, you, point, you point out that the, when they walked in the morgue, <clears throat> there's the, the, I mean, they looked like little angels, mm -hmm. perfect mm -hmm. in their uh, looks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember one family, they only had one daughter. I think they had a bunch of sons, and that, that was their one daughter mm -hmm. yeah, that was right. killed. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember that in the story. Were well, you there too, Ann, when this happened? No, I was, went by later in the evening, but... Uh, no, he was there. He was there for mm -hmm. a number of days. You you kept going back over there. Yeah. What, what do you What do you do? Uh, what What do you say? Well, it, that's very difficult. I mean, we were just mingling with the people and the Amish people. You know, they do three things very well. They do marriage, family, and community very well. Their Their biggest strength is community. Community is actually what holds them together. Uh, the rest of the world needs to learn some things about how oh, they get that right. <laughs> you got that right. Uh, it, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So immediately at this farmhouse next to the schoolhouse, uh, where these ten parents, uh, ten couples, were sitting trying to figure out, uh, with the help of doctors and state police and other things, where their children are, uh, they they were uh, just spending time to to do that. What was the question here? It's fine. Uh, just keep talking. Yeah, uh, they, they uh, man, I, I lost my train of thought. Well, hon, I think one of the things that you were talking about, uh, mm -hmm. forgiveness earlier, and um, one of the amazing things was uh, uh, one of the uh, media people that came to you, and you said to her, oh, do you remember who that was? I to throw in there, but anyhow, uh, uh, That by the end of day, these Amish people will tell the shooter's family that, that they forgive them. Yeah, but, And uh, that we will uh, think no evil of... Well, that, the title of the book comes from an Amish grandfather yeah. leaning over the fence with his grandson standing there and, and said to his grandson, we will think no evil of wow. this man. And you, can, and, you can hear them say that, can't you? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We'll you know, think they, no evil so, of this man. This is so deeply ingrained in how they do things. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's just their, it's almost like their natural response to uh, the difference between the Amish community and many other communities when there's calamity and disaster like this, they go towards the problem, not they, away You from. have to train your children, though, that way. I mean, doesn't, uh, people just don't grow up that way. But, and you know? the interesting thing about how, how the Amish do community, they don't teach them nothing. They show them. Yeah, verbally. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. Yeah. They show them. Yeah. I was at my uncle's funeral uh, just a few years back, and uh, I, I was just totally taken back by this, that everything they did was done to show the next generation how it's done. We've lost that, haven't we, <laughs> in that, this country? And that's, they, they, don't, they don't teach people in a classroom. They, they show them. So it's all done by example. That's, why, mm -hmm. that's how the next generation knows so well what to do. Uh, and what holds them together, they still hold most of their young people 
uh, uh, what keeps people wanting to continue to be Amish is that community feeling. Well, even an identity in the, there. Even that area, because you read about it every once in a while, you hear about it, because they got the buggies or whatever, and then you got some guy that's bombed out of his head drinking, and he kills mm -hmm. them in the buggy, runs into them, mm -hmm. and they, they 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 do the same thing. Oh, it's like. I it's like they're not like, a, how could this idiot, this stupid, this crazy... <laughs> Never oh, yeah. take you to court for it either. Yeah, I mean, exactly. typically yeah. they don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love the story about forgiveness where the shooter's mom, you know, because they forgave him, the shooter, but the family, you know, the shooter's family was a part of this whole you know, uh, funeral and all the things that the Amish people did in the next few weeks. And the, the mother... Uh, because she was forgiven, she was then able to find healing in some way. Tell the story of, of the, about when she was able to go be with one of the girls. Uh, one of the was best uh, an examples example of, of forgiveness yeah. was when, you know, two weeks after this happened, they had a debriefing meeting at the fire hall, local fire hall, and where the first responders, counselors, state police, these ten families all got together. Mm. to just talk about what happened and thank each other and mm. uh, those kind of things. And one by one, those 10 Amish men got up and turned to the family, the widow, the parents of the shooter, uh, of the shooter and said, we forgive you. We don't want this to be a barrier between us. We wow. want to be your friends. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we want you to come visit us. But in that culture, that means we want to come visit you too, but they don't always say it that mm -hmm. way. We want you to come visit us. And then the shooter's mother said to the one family that has this girl that's in a vegetative state, uh, I don't know what her condition is today, but for a long time they Many didn't. Uh, well, actually, when, they, when this girl was in the hospital, they took her home to die. And when the uh, one, of mother. The girl, one of the girls. Yeah. One yeah. of the, the girls, yeah, they took her home to die. Yeah. One of the girls that was shot. Because it was point blank. blank. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. I mean, he was standing over point right. blank. Pretty right. much so, yeah. And then uh, they, they took her home to die. And then when this girl's mother went to the funeral of another girl, said to her daughter, leaving her with somebody else to just watch for a couple of hours while she goes to the funeral, said to her daughter that she thought didn't hear nothing. The, the one that was... That had in, come. A, in a vegetative state. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go be with Jesus while I'm gone, it's okay. Oh my goodness. And then she noticed a little tear came out of this girl's eye. Oh. And then that was the first that this mom realized that this girl hears everything, everything that goes Everything she on. says. Wow. And that's usually the case. Uh, when people are on conscience, they, that's right. they hear. They hear. Uh, that's usually the case. But th this was so. So anyhow, what the shooter's mother, tell what her, finish the story, shooter's yeah, mother. Uh, at this meeting that happened, you know, this, this mother was talking to uh, the shooter's mother about, uh, uh, about this occasion where she seen a tear come out of her eye. And it just so gripped the shooter's mother, she said, uh, can I come visit her? And she said, of course you can. We would have it like this, and see again, that's mm -hmm. a cultural thing there. We mm -hmm. would have it like this, meaning, uh, yeah. they're, they're just please do. And then, so Mrs. Roberts went to this Amish home to visit this girl, and I talked to this girl's father about this to confirm what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and he said uh, she came, and she, uh, the shooter's mother came held this girl, and she was not just a baby, you know, but she held her, sang to her, and put her to bed. And Once, then on the way out, and, she said... And, and her son did that to yeah. her. Mm -hmm. And then on the way out, she said to the father and the mother, she said, may I come next week and do this again? She said, of course, we would have you to. And she did that every week for years. I don't know how long she did it. Wow. She's on, she passed away. She may have done it until she just Dave, I don't know if you anymore. can get a shot of this because the black and white is pretty horrible. I don't know what, can it, Brooke, can you tell me what camera? Okay. 
There it is. All right, can you, yeah. Okay. That, that is the Amish funeral with the buggies mm -hmm. and the girls. And what is amazing <clears throat> in this picture, right there where I'm pointing, is the house of the shooter. Wow. They rode past the house of the shooter mm -hmm. the entire funeral procession. Yeah, because it's right there in the neighborhood. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the most. And then the, uh, the shooter's mother, after having experienced that, said to her friends, you can't imagine how healing that was for me mm -hmm. to be able to go there yeah. and do that now. Oh, it was therapy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But think about that platform that uh, was made available through forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's and right. And to me, that's what the world is missing today. Mm -hmm. We we don't wow. have that. No. Yeah. We don't have that platform of those good things that can happen because of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody, hardly anybody in today's chaos, is teaching that subject. No. Uh, they're let not. me let right. me just say, um, when when I tell you it's well written. Hmm. Would you believe me? Because <laughs> I read a lot of books. Yeah. This is so detailed, so well written that you've got to go to the next chapter and the next chapter and the next chapter. In fact, when you're reading it, you're not believing it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's made up. This talks about the forgiveness. This is the book right here, the Word of God. Mm -hmm that is for forgiveness from cover to cover. I'm going to use a verse that everybody knows. Maybe you know it, but you've forgotten it, or maybe you haven't used it for a long time. But it, it, to me, every time I hear it, it's the epitome of forgiveness. For God mm -hmm. so loved the world mm -hmm. that He gave His mm -hmm. only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, mm -hmm. but have everlasting life. That verse is talking about forgiveness. In fact, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, yes. He is faithful and just yes. to forgive us our sins mm -hmm. and to cleanse us from mm -hmm. all unrighteousness. That's our Heavenly Father. Yes. He taught us to forgive. Yes. They're living out, mm -hmm. as Jonas just said, they demonstrate what to do. Not just say words, yes. they demonstrate what to do. We can do that in our personal life. Mm -hmm. We are, many times, the only Bible people will ever read. Right. It's yeah. what we do. Trust God if you don't know Him. He will change your life. God bless you. Bye-bye.